Um, thank you for joining me today for some farm to table content and photography tips. Um, let's see here. There we go. Okay, so if you don't know me, um, my name is Hannah. This is my husband, Andy, and our Australian Shepherd, May. Um, I started HD Images Photography in 2018, um, and I set out with the mission of capturing the real of rural living through shoebox, excuse me, through shoebox photos that leave a legacy. Um, and that just means that I don't necessarily photograph the pictures that you're going to print off and hang on the wall right now. Um, but they're photos that you'll kind of keep tucked away and later on down the road, those photos will mean a lot. Um, and you'll be glad that you have them to reminisce on on how life was today. So um, I do that in a few different ways, um, mainly farm and ranch uh, lifestyle photography. I also capture families multiple times throughout the year with four seasons photography. And then, of course, the reason that you are here tonight, um, farm to table photography. Um, specifically for farm to table ag producers um, selling their products directly to consumers. So let's just jump right in um, and start talking some content strategy and tips for farm to table producers. So we're going to talk about three main things tonight. One, content strategy, uh, two, product shots, and three, smartphone photography tips. And we'll make sure that you have all the tools for marketing your farm to table business. Uh, so first and foremost, if you do not have my content strategy guide, um, jot down my email address, shoot me an email, I'll email it over to you. Um, but this is what I use to plan my own content um, and to develop my own strategy. So I know there's lots of different ways to go about doing this, but this is what I find to be the most helpful. Um, Okay, so first of all, think about why you're sharing online. Why am I sharing on social media? So my main reasons that I share on social media, not why I'm a photographer, but why I share on social media, um, one is to book photo shoots, right? This is a business. Uh, my business is uh, taking pictures. Your business is selling your farm goods. So that is my main reason. Um, another one is to connect with people whose paths I would not cross in real life. Um, social media has a wonderful way of doing that, and it's it's such an incredible thing to build those relationships through these apps. Um, but other examples could be to sell your farm to table products. That's a very obvious one. Um, maybe you're wanting to advocate for agriculture. Um, maybe you're wanting to share farm stats. Maybe you're just wanting to connect the urban-rural divide. Um, whatever that is for you, just make sure that you know what that is and that you're firm on it. Um, sharing on social media is not easy. It's very time consuming um, and sometimes it can be very challenging. So knowing why you're doing this will help you push through on those hard days when you're like, man, I just, I don't have a post in me. I don't want to do it. Um, so the very first thing once you've found your why is to create a brain dump. So just think of anything um, that you might be interested in posting on social media. Um, list any ideas for current posts you have, captions, any photos you'd love to share. Um, any real audios that you've heard that you're like, oh, I can totally use this. Um, if you're on TikTok, same kind of thing. Facebook, same thing. Um, and then revisit any of your current posts that had high engagement. So not just likes, but um, shares, comments, uh, those things um, that really engaged your community and figure out how you can create more of that. Once you have um, kind of some general ideas put down, start to brainstorm some common themes. What are things that keep coming up um, that I can niche down and use to serve my followers? So these are referred to oftentimes as content pillars. Um, and they're just things that, again, are common themes that you share throughout um, everything you share on social media. So for me, um, my content pillars are photography, um, tips, tricks, calls to actions to book shoots, um, and then my next one is recent work. So I'm a photographer that is so much content ready for me to use. So I'm gonna share the photos I've taken recently. Um, and then something fun about me. So this might be sharing our ranch in the sand hills. It might be just quirky things that I do when I'm editing. It could just be funny things about me that make me laugh um, that I hope other people will laugh at also. Um, do not include things that make you feel uncomfortable. So. A common thing when we start sharing on social media is, oh my gosh, I don't want to put my entire life and air all my dirty laundry on the internet. You absolutely do not need to do that. You should not do that. Um, so just pick things to include in your content pillars that you are very comfortable with. Um, along with that, if you have certain family members or a significant other 
who you're like, man, that person is hilarious. They're a wealth of knowledge or, um, you know, they're a great dancer, but they hate having their picture taken. They hate being in videos. They don't want to dance for Instagram reels. Do not include them in your content strategy. Um, and there are in your content pillars. Um, it's just going to make things harder for you if you're constantly having to convince someone who doesn't want to do something with you to do it. Um, another example would be um, if you're from a multifaceted family farm or a multi-generational family farm and certain members of your, your family or your organization don't feel comfortable on social media. Well, don't build your content pillars around sharing all the roles on the farm if some of those roles don't want to be shared. Um, so just think through that. Um, and again, focus on things that you enjoy sharing about that come naturally to you that you found in your brain dump um, and avoid those things that are, are maybe touchy subjects or, or harder um, to bring together. So once you have that figured out, we can focus um, even more a little niche down onto know, like, and trust content. So people buy from people. We want to have a relationship. We want to know who we're buying from. Um, and so in order to do that, they must know, like, and trust you. So I like to look at my content um, in these three different ways, as well as my content pillars. So let's deep dive into these a little bit more. No content is who you are and what you do. So I'm Hannah Dorn. I'm a photographer. I live near Minden, Nebraska. Um, I didn't grow up on a farm. You know, all of those things are, are just simply who I am. Um, and that I can connect with people over, es especially your name, even your name. If you don't have your name in your account, let people know what your name is. Um, like goes a little bit step further. Like content tells a story. So this is anything you can share with your followers that they might say, hey, me too. Um, so this can, this is where you can go into uh, why you do what you do. Um, and you can keep this as kind of like surface level or as deep as you want it to go. So for an example, I didn't grow up on a farm. I don't like wearing boots. The other day I shared that in my stories and I had a ton of people message me back that were like, hey, me neither. I don't like to wear boots. I'm all about wearing tennis shoes on the ranch. Whatever that is for you. Um, and the more you can kind of dive a little deeper, um, the more you can connect with people. So again, this is not airing your dirty laundry on social media. It's simply just finding those things that you're willing to share that can help you connect um, with those um, on social media. So the third one is trust. And this is anything that creates social proof. So this can be testimonials. This can be sharing your education, your experience, your qualifications, um, product reviews. Uh, those are all great things. So actually just yesterday I shared a reel. Um, I had delivered a photo gallery and um, the client messaged me back right away with the kindest compliment and was so grateful for the photos. So I just took a little screenshot of that place it over some of those photos, perfect trust content, perfect testimonial. I took these photos, my client loved them, you will too. Okay, next step, schedule it out. Um, so the biggest thing with social media, I'm sure you've heard this, is to be consistent. Um, <laughs> that looks different for me in different phases of life. I've tried various things, once a month, or excuse me, not, not once a month, once a week, every day in a week, three times a week, four times a week, two times a week. Um, right now I'm kind of settling on three days a week just because it fits well with my three content pillars. So Mondays I'll post about photography, um, whether they're tips or calls to action or something like that. Um, the services I offer Wednesday will be recent work and then Fridays are something fun. Um, and I found that's been a pretty easy schedule to follow. Um, there are options where you can batch content I personally don't like to do this. So if you want to know more about batching content, um, just Google it. There are tons of resources out there. But for me, I just like to have an idea of what I'm going to post throughout the week. And then I typically make my posts the day of. Um, I'd love to be a person who has their content planned out a week or two in advance, but that's just not me. So again, just find a strategy that works for you. And then finally, create your shot list. So as you have built out your schedule, as you've built out your content plan, think of all the photos and video clips that you're going to need to make these posts and reels and stories happen. Um, and once you know what photos and video clips you'll need, think about if you're able to capture this content yourself or if you need to hire a photographer to help. Um, 
our smartphones can do wonderful things. We can take great selfies. We can use self timers. We can use time lapse. We can use the video feature. So many things. But sometimes it's just so much easier to have someone come out and say, here's the list of 25 photos I need to get me all my content for the next few months to get me photos for my website, to get me photos um, for our product brochures, whatever it may be. Um, it's just best to hire someone in those situations. So um, this shot list will really help you if you have a, a definite shot list when that photographer comes out, uh, you can crank out so much in a pretty short amount of time. Um, this is something I love to do. I love to help with this. So I would uh, be delighted to help if anyone's feeling a little overwhelmed by actually capturing the content. So, and if you're, you're just overwhelmed with the um, content strategy as a whole, um, I would invite you to book a content strategy call. You can go through your um, document, kind of come up with your own ideas, and then I'm happy to talk through it with you. Um, sometimes all it takes is just uh, kind of brainstorming back and forth and you can really get some good ideas going and, and some good things put together. Okay, so let's move on. Um, I titled this three tips for better beef photos just because it's a fun alliteration, but this can really go for any product. Um, so three main things, choose your location, choose your lighting and add some garnish. So <laughs> choose your location. I have a confession. This is my kitchen. This is what it looks like. It is not pretty. It's very functional, but it is not the most beautiful kitchen you've ever seen. It's not going to be making its way into any uh, lifestyle blog posts or um, magazines anytime soon. It also has horrible lighting. <laughs> um, between the horrible lighting, the blue countertops, it just does not make for a good backdrop. So I actually photographed my food right over here. Um, you can't see it in my computer screen, but this is right next to my desk. There's a big sliding glass window that goes to nowhere, as you can see, um, but it lets in so much awesome natural light. So this is where I like to take my photos. I have um, what are called duo boards. They're from V Flat World, the letter V and then Flat World. Um, so each side of those boards is actually different, um, a slightly different color. So I can make tons of different countertop backsplash combinations. Um, highly recommend. <laughs> I'm not being paid to promote these. I just think they're awesome. Um, if you do decide to purchase something like this, they have two sizes. I would recommend the bigger size um, just because it gives you more option uh, as far as like angles and, and things like that. But highly recommend. If you are not in the market for something like that, um, feel free to just use like butcher paper or a really big cutting board, or maybe you do have a beautiful kitchen um, with awesome natural light. That works great, um, but just be re resourceful and focus mainly on uh, the light. Speaking of lighting, um, natural light through east or west facing windows are my favorite. So this is a west facing window. Um, best light is between 10 and 3 p.m. I'm a little dark on this screen. Uh, we're past the ideal light time. I would not picture beef in this light, it's way too dark. Um, so make sure you're using the prime light of the day um, and be sure to turn off your overhead lights and lamps. And we'll talk more about this once we get into the smartphone photo tips, but um, that is one of my biggest tips. Uh, so bookmark this one for later. And then last but not least, add some garnish. So this is where um, your creativity really gets to flourish. And this is one of my favorite things about photographing food products. Um, I had a blast going to the farmer's market and just picking out some colorful and creative things to pair with um, the steak in the top right corner. Um, the bottom photo is obviously for some Christmas time bundles. So we put in a little greenery and some berries. Um, but don't forget that beef is the focal point, so you don't want anything too big or, or too obnoxious that takes away from the beef. Um, beef is <laughs> kind of brown. It's not always the most beautiful thing to look at, especially if it's on a brown cutting board. It's just a lot of brown in one photo, so I like to add in things that are of different colors, um, different textures to just kind of make that photo pop. Okay, rapid fire my um, best smartphone photography tips. So let's just jump right in. If you do have your phone nearby, hopefully you're not, you might be on your phone, but um, if you can, you might wanna pull your camera app up so that you can actually kind of go through these as we go. 
Um, so first and foremost, the equipment does not define the photographer. The equipment is only as good as the operator. So you do not need the nicest, fanciest, most expensive smartphone that money can buy. Um, you also don't need to go out and buy yourself big fancy cameras to take really great photos. Um, if you know how to operate your equipment, you can do some really great things. So the number one step to avoid blurry photos is clean your lens. <laughs> These phones go with us everywhere. A lot of places they probably shouldn't. We're wiping this selfie camera up against our face all day long. We're, you know, smudging the back. We're doing all these things. So just clean off your lenses before you ever start taking a photo or video. Okay, next back to our indoor lighting. So overhead lighting is not your friend. This is a photo of me. It is so bad. The message is good, but the photo itself is terrible. So I was sitting under my dining room table. We had our overhead light right here and it was casting just down onto my face. So um, hopefully you can see this pointer here, but see on my forehead is very, very bright. As we move down my face, we have more shadows. Under my eyes, it looks like I haven't slept for two weeks. <laughs> just not a good photo. So instead, again, I'm back to my trusty big window. Um, use your natural light. Um, shut off the lights to the side of you. Again, I'm not following my own advice here because we're past the prime light of the day. Um, but shut off the lamps, shut off the overhead lights, and use as much natural light as you can. Um, in the first photo, I put my back to the door, um, and so there was a lot of um, overexposure behind me from that light, and my face is pretty shadowed. As we move to the middle photo, I turned my body sideways so that the um, light was coming here, so I kind of have some shadow across my face. If you're looking for something kind of artistic, this can be a really fun angle to go with, um, but if you're really just looking, excuse me, for a bright, well-lit photo, um, this one over here is going to be your best bet. So I turn my body and face directly towards the light. Um, and you'll notice my, my skin is bright and clear and there's no shadows. Um, and it's just a, a much higher quality photo than especially this one on the far end. So now let's talk about outdoor lighting. Um, some things to know, blue hour is about 20 to 30 minutes before sunrise and about 20 to 30 minutes after sunset. So I'm looking out my window now, depending on where you are, you might be in blue hour right now. Um, so this is where the sun has gone down. You've usually got some bold and vibrant colors um, in the sun, sunrise or sunset. Um, this is a great time of day to capture those bold colors, but it's not necessarily the best time of day to photograph. Um, a subject, it's great for silhouettes, um, but especially with a smartphone, you might have some challenges uh, actually capturing a well-exposed subject. Golden hour, on the other hand, is an hour after sunrise and an hour before sunset. Um, and this is typically a photographer's favorite time to shoot. Um, so that's important to keep in mind. Now in agriculture, we cannot uh, <laughs> plan our day-to-day -day operations around golden hour. That doesn't make sense. So just keep in mind the harshest light is midday. In the wintertime, it's like nine to four roughly. Um, on a sunny day in the summertime, like right now, I would say it's probably eight to five or six, um, probably closer to six this time of year. Um, so just keep your eye on things. Um, the middle of the day is going to be your harshest light. You'll have the least amount of shadows though. Um, and then of course, cloudy days are wonderful for photos, um, but we haven't had many cloudy days in Nebraska as unfortunately we're all aware of because it hasn't rained for a long time. So we can't order up the weather we want. We can only use what we have. Um, so if you do have a cloudy day, just account for a little bit later sunrise or an earlier sunset. And here are some photos of my pup May. Um, she was a nice model for me this day. So in the first photo, again, the sunshine is behind her. So we lose a lot of her features. Her eyes blend into the mask on her face. Um, we just can't see her very well. Once I had her face the light, then we were able to bring in um, obviously her eye right here and a little bit more of the details in her fur. And my personal favorite of these three is the um, photo in the shadow. So or excuse me, in the shade. So best case scenario, if it is bright and sunny out while you're photographing, um, try to get to the shade. If you can't get to the shade, try to have your subject face the light. 
if you're photographing humans, they're probably going to be squinting. So keep that in mind. Um, you may also get like a really golden hue to your photos, but um, if you're photographing like a cow or something like that, you can really get creative with some of those, um, you know, bright sunny colors. All right, let's see if these videos will work. Tap to focus, this is a pretty basic one, but you'll notice my camera is trying to default to this cow back here. So instead I just tap that I want this cow. So I just tap this screen. Pretty basic, we probably all know that, but just in case you don't, um, especially on like a bright day again, where your camera is confused, where do you want me to look? You can just tap it, tell it what you want. Okay, next one, I encourage you to try this one out. I have an example from inside and outside. Yeah, let's see if I can pause it. So um, if you tap your screen and slide your thumb up and down on your camera, you can change the exposure. So see on this video how I'm, you can't see my thumb moving, but as it slides up, it gets brighter. As it slides down, it gets darker. Let's look at it outside. Same thing, I can also slide along the bottom. Once I get that exposure set that I'm wanting to change it, I can tell it slide back and forth. So you can um, move this little carrot down. See here it's up. If you push it down, then you can slide it across the bottom. So I'll play this one more time. Here it's very bright. The cow's white face is overexposed. As I start to pull it down, there we go. Uh, I needed her to turn and look, but see, much darker, much less overexposed. So again, just play around with it, find a happy medium. Portrait mode, such a wonderful thing, such a frustrating thing at the same time. So um, with portrait mode, and it, again, if you do have your smartphone, I'd encourage you to go there. Um, in the top right corner, there is a little F. Um, and I don't know if you can see that on my phone, but there's a little F right there. If you tap that F, you can get to this scroll bar at the bottom where you can slide back and forth. And that's kind of what I'm showing here in this video. Let me play it one more time. So see, I'm sliding down here. Watch the background of my photo. I can see a lot more grass right here. As we bring it back down, this gets a lot blurrier. So the lower the number, the blurrier the background, the higher the number, the more in focus your background is going to be. So there's a lot of physics, a lot of mechanics behind this. If you're curious why this is happening, Google it. I can't explain it very well, but just know lower number, blurrier background, higher number background will be more in focus. A fun tip with iPhones is that after you take your portrait mode photo, you can go in and edit it and you can actually change the f-stop after you've already taken the picture. So if you do take a photo and you get to looking at it, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so blurry. Like everything just looks like a fuzzy blob. Go in, change the f-stop, adjust it to be a little bit higher number, um, and you can actually fix some of those photos. All right, built-in lenses. So phones common have are pretty common now to have more than one lens in the back. So these are different lenses. Um, again, you do not need to go out and buy the iPhone with all the lenses. Just get what makes sense for you to have. Um, mine does have three. So iPhone calls it a 0.5X lens, a 1X lens, and a 2.5X lens. So use those lenses. Those are good. Um, but what I will tell you is do not zoom. Please do not zoom. Um, when you zoom, you're actually going past the standard zoom on the lens. Um, and so it's hard to tell in this photo, I realize that, but this photo, if I were to print it off and blow it up to a big like 10 by 12 or even an eight by 10, even a five by six, honestly, this photo is not going to have a very good quality. It's going to be blurry. It's going to look pixelated. Um, try and just stick with your actual lens in your camera. And then if you need to, you can edit it and crop it, um, but just try not to use the pinch to zoom feature that will really start to diminish the quality of your photo. If you can, just move closer to your subject. Obviously when I'm photographing a cow looking out of a mineral tub, if I walk towards her, she's gonna leave. I can't do that. So instead I can just, um, 
take it, you know, further back and then crop it afterwards when I go to edit. And speaking of editing, <laughs> this is an art in and of itself. And I personally, like so much of editing is just your own personal taste. So I'm not gonna tell you how you should or shouldn't edit your photos, um, but I can give you a couple of tips if you are interested in editing your photos. So you can download the Lightroom mobile app. I think it's free. It might be just a small cost if not. Um, and then my friend Sarah Haydenfeld is a photographer here in Nebraska as well. Um, she has actually created a course teaching you how to use Lightroom Mobile, and she's also created some presets that come with that course. So if you scan this QR code over here, it'll take you to her site. She can teach that much better than I can. <laughs> um, and if you are interested in using presets, so many different people sell Lightroom presets, but she um, has some ways, or she has a great tutorial on how to actually get them into your, your Lightroom Mobile app and use them. If you're unfamiliar with a preset, a preset is just a set set of adjustments that you can add um, to your photos and then you don't have to go through and slide every single slider to get the photo to look how you want. Okay, so we're nearing the end. Um, we talked about three main things, content strategy, product shots, and smartphone photography tips. Um, I hope that these gave you some tools to do a lot of this on your own. Um, but if you are like, oh my gosh, no, I want to raise the food product. I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> That's where I come in. Um, I'm here to help you with all of this. I'm here to do whatever I can um, to make your life easier and to help you get your food products out the door and onto consumers' plates. Um, so if that is of interest to you, please reach out to me. Um, there's my Instagram. There's my Facebook, don't Facebook message me. I'm never gonna see it. <laughs> um, but you can Instagram DM me if you have more questions um, or email me, email me as best, text, call, whatever. I'm happy to chat with you more, happy to answer more questions. And if there is an opportunity um, to kind of work with you more um, and just kind of kind of get your, your farm to table products out the door, I would love to do so. So that is all I have for you tonight. My goal is 8.30. Look at that, it's 8.30 on the nose. So um, that's it. I'll stick around. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining tonight and I hope you have a wonderful evening and I hope that you learned something. <laughs>